so recently, well, I, I don't know how recently this happened, but it, it was on a bunch of blog sites and we reported on it that you actually came out of the closet as a gay man. And yeah. At what point in your life did you realize that, that you were gay? Or are you gay or bisexual because you also have a daughter? I'm gay. I have a daughter and two sons. Daughter and two sons. Yeah. Okay. At what point in your life did you realize you were gay? I had, um, I had, I, I, I've experienced some things. Uh, experienced some things when I was younger. Uh, still was loving girls and I, I still love girls. And, um, but still dealing with girls. And uh, after I was divorced, I was married for about seven years, and after my divorce, uh, I, left, I left our house, and I slept in my car for about three weeks, and washed up in LA Fitness, and uh, I left the country. I actually went to Amsterdam for a while. When I got back, um, a guy that was pursuing me was really the only person to really open the door that I felt comfortable with. It was other people that opened the door, but I felt comfortable with going there because I didn't want people to know that I was sleeping in my car. And uh, our relationship, we had like a, just a, it wasn't even a relationship, but I stayed there. And after a while, was, you know, I, I, once I met someone, um, I just, you know, I kept trying to go back and forth. And I felt that that wasn't cool at all to be, you know, making this girl a girl think that I'm into them and or being into them and trying to be with guys at the same time. And uh, I can't say that it was a, I came out. I, I, I announced something that happened uh, that occurred in my life. And out of being hurt, that's when I kind of said it and everybody put it together. Okay. I, I talked to someone at death row that that was there during the time. And you know, this is a private conversation, so I can't say who it is. But I said, you know, you know, Danny Boy came out of the closet. And he said, oh, yeah, we, we already knew that even back then. Like, you know, like that there, were, there was sort of, you know, rumors and stuff like that of, of you, you being gay while you were still at death row. Was, was that something that, that you were still doing while you were there? Yeah, I, I, I dibbled and dabbled. But, you know, uh, for that person to know, did you look at them funny? You should have, because you should have asked them, like, how you know? Because that's the true question. Because I didn't tell nobody. Only person that knew it was people I did stuff with. And anybody else that knew it was people that do stuff, too. Okay. Were you having relations with other artists during that time? Yeah. <laughs> Not on death row, though. Yuck. All of them was ugh. No. <laughs> so so you, you, never, you never had, had sex with any other or artists? No, nah, and it wasn't, a, other artists. it wasn't a sex thing. It wasn't a, I, I guess it was sexual, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't all that. Like, you know what I mean? I dibbled and dabbed and did certain things that guys just don't do. I guess straight guys don't do with straight guys, but it wasn't that I was pretty new at it and tried things, but it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to go have sex with this dude or he's going to, it wasn't like that. At that time, it wasn't. You know, in that book that we talked about, Have Gun, Will Travel, and, and also when you look at some of the, some of the comments on, on, uh, on your social media, a lot of people ask whether you and Suge ever had a, had a relationship like that. Yuck. No. <laughs> no. Not at all. No type of relationship like that. Nothing but father, son, big brother, little brother relationship. Nothing at all. Not my type. Thanks, everybody, you. but not my type. Nope. Gotcha. So once you really started, you know, to come out and put, put, put this out publicly, what really changed in your life? Uh, if I can tell you why I came out and I'll tell you what, what changed, because a lot of people, a lot of people, friendships changed on me. Uh, a lot of people stopped talking to me. People that I've been close to for years, 20 something years. I became like a, I guess a monster or something. Uh, I got kids. My daughter is 20. She'll be 21 next week, a week and a half. Uh, so the dynamics of those things kind of change because that's that's hard to share with your child, you know, especially being the father. It's it's almost accepted as if mothers do it, but you know, when fathers do it, it's it's really looked ashamed upon. 
uh, that changed. But I came out or I, I, I announced that I was in a relationship. I met a guy, 23 years old. Uh, he was 24 when he passed. But uh, we were talking and nobody knew we were talking. And uh, while I was out on the road one weekend, uh, he stopped communicating. While we were out, I talked to him a little bit. The next day he stopped communicating. I texted him a kind of a smart text. Hey, look, you're not hearing me back. I'll see you when I get back to Ohio, you know, whatever. And uh, that next morning I was snowed, I was snowed in. I was snowed in and uh, uh, his phone rang while I was at the airport. I couldn't get out of Jacksonville back to Ohio. And I kind of asked him with attitude, what's up? And uh, it was a guy on the end, he said, is this Danny boy? I was like, yeah. He's like, um, my brother killed himself. I said, excuse me, and I kind of like pulled the phone away. And he said, uh, Anthony, his voice was trembling. He said, Anthony uh, committed suicide last night. And uh, I went on to my Facebook and posted, you know, suicide is real and just kind of gave a spiel about suicide. And I'm like, wow, finally feeling somebody and they committed suicide and Lord help us, something like that. And my inbox has started to filling up, praying for you, praying for her family. Because uh, I put Tony with an I. I made it look like it was a girl. And his name was Anthony. And uh, praying for you and her family. And about three or four days went by. And once I got back and seen him at the funeral home is when I decided to uh, uh, go on Facebook and I put his picture up. And they said, uh, some people was like, man, you knew two people who committed suicide? And that's when I said, no, this is, uh, I was, we were dating and he committed suicide. And man, what did I do that for? <laughs> what did I do that for? Uh, I was leading praise and worship in churches and the messages that church people were sending me probably killed me more than anything. Do you think that, that he killed himself because of him being gay and, and the, you know, everything that goes around it? I do. I do think that had a lot to do with it. But um, when he was younger, his father had committed suicide as well. So I just think that it was something that uh, a spirit that he was dealing with. And from our conversations, now that I look back on it, uh, you know, because we talked about it, you know, when I a little bit when I first met him, you know, he told me some things about, you know, his family and, you know, how he wasn't feeling right and about how his family feel about his lifestyle and you know he he lost his job he was smoked a blunt dropped dropped the table on a lady foot when he got off of work and we smoked all the time and he dropped the table helping somebody else he's off the clock and they test him drug test him and he uh got fired and he was like yeah i had to go in the hospital because i was so suicidal i was so suicidal and i was like i was like man he told me about his dad right during that we were walking to the store to get a cigar and he's like, I was like, so how do you feel now? And he's like, well, you know, now that you're here, I just love you, babe. You're so, you're so spiritual now that you're here. And I, I just grabbed him. I said, well, you got the right person. And I began to pray with him uh, in the parking lot. I began to pray with him. And, uh, you know, now that I look at him, man, he was hurting from how people felt about him, what people thought about him. And, uh, you know, from that, from that day, of me noticing that, that what it is, man. Uh, I vow, I vow, man, I'm working on a campaign called Love Against Suicide. And, you know, if I can help somebody not just coming out with their sexuality, people are hurting everywhere over something, man. And, and I, I would hate to see somebody go through that. And his dying, uh, his dying actually birthed something in me and it helped me live. Sure. Now, when you, you have three kids. Uh, is it from, from three different mothers or, yes. or is yep. it two? Three different mothers. The last okay. was my ex-wife. So when you had that conversation with the mothers of your children that, that you're gay, uh, how did that go? Uh, I only talked to two of them so far. I haven't seen one of my sons for about three and a half, four years. And uh, I haven't talked to her. I'm sure that's not going to go well because... Nothing has went well in that relationship but my son. Uh, but uh, we don't really get along. Uh, as far as uh, my daughter mom, which is my first child mother, um, 
In the beginning, you know, she, she Bibled me down. She said, well, thus said the Lord. And uh, now it's, it's a lot of support, not, not supporting what it is, but she loved me for who I am. And now we talk and she'll say certain things and we give, she'll give me a relationship advice. I mean, she know me. She know me when I didn't have nothing, knew me when I had something, know me when I don't have nothing again. Like she know me. So uh, that, that's pretty cool. My ex-wife took it pretty hard. Uh, uh, she took it pretty hard because she didn't have an idea. And it, it, I'm sure it brought some shame on her, you know, in our church. It brought shame on her, uh, you know, in her family and her, amongst her friends. And we just started talking again. Uh, I, I don't, I'm sure she don't like it, but uh, I, I'm in my son's life. I'm in my daughter's life. Uh, my son doesn't know. He's 11 years old. Uh, he doesn't know. Uh, and uh, I mean, you know, that, that's who I, I'm particularly worried about, my, my, my boys, being able to talk to them about it and being able to talk, keep my daughter in good spirit because Mean things have been said to my daughter. People inbox things, you know. They sent her media. Uh, they sent her some of the media stuff. Uh, they they put it in her box and and they send quotes. And the painful part is her reading, what people have to say. To to read that and uh, you know I just try to instill in her, tell her, you know I'm sorry that we going through this and that's really it. If one of your sons approached you right now and said, Dad, uh, I'm gay. Uh, how, how would you approach it at this point? Wow. Um, first off, I won't. If they're mature enough to come to me to tell me who they are, I applaud that. Because first off, people don't have a relationship with their kids where they allow them to tell them who they are or what they like or what they dislike. You know, kids, some kids say, I don't like school. It's, not, it's, not, uh, it's, 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 it's okay for them not to like school, but you got to go. But I need to know that you don't like school so that I could make sure that things are in place so that you could be successful. And uh, if they were, man, you know, I, I would prefer or I, I, I pray that they are able to experience the life that I experience when it comes to being with a woman or being married to a woman and having kids. I want them to experience that, you know, because it, it didn't work for me, but it, I, I pray that it worked for them because who don't want grandkids? But, you know, again, man, I, I, if, if, if that's who they are, they my boys. And that's a hard thing to say. Why is it a hard thing to say? Because it's a hard lifestyle. It's, it's, not, it's not easy. It's not easy at all. Why is that? Oh. Uh, I, I'm a true man of God and uh, I've always tried to live my life to let that shine because that's what I was taught and I don't want to do anything that's going to interfere with that I don't want to do anything that's going to interfere with uh, friendships, any ships, because ships are made to take you places. And I definitely don't want anything. I've been pushed away from music so long. And I don't want to have anything that's going to interfere with my music because it's looked at uh, it's looked, I can't believe him sitting there like Michelle A crying. <laughs> uh, it's, you know, it's my music, man, and I take it to heart, and I want it. And I don't want anybody to say, you know, because that's what a lot of people say. Oh, man, you might, you, you could have a chance, but you should have kept that in the closet, or you should be like this, or you should be like that. And it's just hard being you, man. It's hard being honest. Honest people rather take a lie from you. People rather help you lie than to help you be true to yourself and true to other people. 
And I just don't want to see, I don't want to see my kids go through that at all. I mean, I mean, it's interesting because you, you yourself are a gay man, but it sounds like you don't want your sons to be gay. Yeah, just because of what come with it. It's not easy, man. It's not accepted, especially in the black community. It's not accepted. It's like, it's not accepted. You can't imagine the, the inboxes and threats I get over who I like, like I like them. And most of the people that send them aren't even people I would be attracted to ever. And they really kind of forget, I think a lot of them forget, you know, me being gay, it does not define who I am. I'm still a man. I'm still a man. I grew up in church. I'm well-rounded. I got sense. I have common sense. I try to treat people right. And I know people from all walks of life. All walks. From police. Politicians. Killers. So I'm not. They forget that I, I wasn't scared then. I'm not scared now. I, I fear for my kids. I don't want nobody want to see their kids go through certain things. But like I don't I'm not moved by by threats. Like it is what it is. When I was around, even those people, whoever told you that they knew that I was gay, they knew that they couldn't say nothing to me about it. I can cook. I can sing and I can defend myself. Those are three things that I know that I can do. And, and I won't let just because of who I decide, you know, man, sex is what? 10, 15 minutes when you get <laughs> get around, you know, 20, 30 minutes if you're feeling really good, 30 minutes. I got 20 some hours out of a day outside of that. That describe who I am. My music describe who I am. My, my, my spirit, my heart, what I exude, that's describe who I am. I don't want to be defined by, you know, this is who I like. I love who I love, and that's it. Point blank. Well, you, you had mentioned on your Instagram, uh, you had put up a, a post that said, what, what if the woman of my dreams is out there somewhere, and I, I'm out here with know, this, gay this gay shit, wasting my time? I'm funny, man. It's Instagram. It's, uh, <laughs> you're supposed to be funny, man. Make people laugh. And at the time, I was, I was going through something in my relationship, and hell, I was trying to make them mad. You know, because that's hard, too, even on the gay side. When they know you've been with a woman, you know, the biggest thing is they feel, you know, the, you might not be for this. You might go back to a girl. And so, you know, they even have things that come to the relationship that they're fighting as well. So that could cause a problem in a relationship, you know. But uh, I, I made those statements, man. I'm very vocal. You on my Instagram, you'll see... I'm on there, I'll, I'll take a picture like I'm shitting. And I'll get an inbox from it like, hey, dude, what are you doing on the toilet? Bruh, stop, you know? Or, you know, or the next day I'm in the kitchen cooking my ribs or cooking my jerk chicken that I slam on or singing. Or I might be on there, you know, saying something inspirational. The next day I might be straight up putting somebody in their damn place. That's what Instagram is for. And it, honestly, man, even it being put out in media, it showed me who I was because I forgot. When, you, when you're away so long and you're going, through, you're going through the problems that you're going through, I'm swimming in my problems and forgetting who Danny Boy is. I got 6,000 friends. I got friends that got 34, 43,000 friends and they ain't never been on the record. I'm like, man, I'm trying to get my friendships up with them. Like, how can I get... 30, 40,000 friends. So I feel like nobody really know me. And then this big magnifying glass, I wake up and my god brother called me. He's like, hey man, don't be mad at me. You got to fix this. I'm like, what do you mean I got to fix this? He like, you, you got to fix this, D. I was like, what? He's like, go look at the site. I went to look at the site and I'm like, oh, Jesus, here we go. And I call him back and I'm like, what do you mean how I fix it? Well, you got to go tell him. You know, he tried to get me to spin. You know, somebody put it out. <laughs> you know, you fired somebody and they put it out there. No, man, I put I put the statement I put is on my Instagram, my personal Instagram that I put on there. 
that I was just expressing myself. And that's what social media is for. Everybody else uses it. I don't know what nobody else uses it for. I, I talk to people that I know across the world that I just met through the, through the screen and say certain things. So I meant no harm by it and they just paid attention to it real big. I understand that mindset because I like have that like, because you don't believe in somebody so much, you just joke on them. Like, I'm gonna joke on you. I don't believe you. Mm -hmm. So I understand it, but you know, I want hip hop, period, like, yeah. to stop the shenanigans with that type of shit. Like, yo, motherfucker, rap, go rap. My monthly uh, overhead for my household and employee, just household employees, was somewhere in the neighborhood of like a million dollars a month I was spending.